In this video, you're going to learn how to graph parabolas in the standard form. We're going to go through three examples together, see if you can follow this and practice some of these on your own. So when we talk about quadratic functions in standard form and we're, we're graphing the parabola shape that it forms, the standard form is this y equals ax squared plus bx plus c form. And notice that it's in descending order from the highest power down to the constant. And what we do is we use this formula here that you're going to want to memorize, x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a. And what that does is that gives us the axis of symmetry, which is the line that divides the parabola in half. It's also the x-coordinate of the vertex, that's the point where the graph bends. And by plugging it back in, we can find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's talk about this uh, in the first example and I'll explain as I go here. So in this case you can see that uh, our a value is 2, our b value is negative 8, and our c value is 5. Make sure you capture whether it's positive or negative. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b really means like the opposite of b. So it would be the opposite of negative 8 which is positive 8 over 2 times a which is 2. So that comes out to 8 over 4, which is equal to 2. So what that means is that our axis of symmetry is going to be right here at x equals 2. And that's the line that divides the parabola in half. It's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. And so what we can do is we can take that 2, plug it back in for x to solve for our y-coordinate of our vertex. So let's go ahead and do that. So we get 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. Make sure you follow your PEMDAS, your order of operations. Uh, 8 times 2 is 16. 8 minus 16 is negative 8, plus 5 is negative 3. So you can see here that y is equal to negative 3. Let's go ahead and plot that on our graph. So 2, negative 3 is right here. That's our vertex. And then because it's symmetric on both sides of this axis of symmetry, we can make a table and what you can do is just pick some points on either side of this x-coordinate. So I went one below and I went one above. Or if I go two below and I go two above. Because these values are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and put one in for x here. So we get one squared is one times two is two minus eight times one is uh, eight. So that's two minus eight is negative six plus five is negative 1. So if this is negative 1, this is also negative 1 because it's the same on both sides. And then this is interesting here that when it's in standard form, this c value is our y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. And the reason that is is because when you put 0 in for x, 0 times anything is 0, so it's going to cancel out these two terms and you can see that your y-coordinate is the c value. So in this case when we plug in 0, you can see that our y-intercept is going to be here at 5, which means that this point is also going to be 5 because it's symmetric. So let's go ahead and plot these points. So we've got a 1, negative 1, which is right here, reflected over the line of symmetry. We had 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Reflect that over the line of symmetry. And now you can see we're getting a pretty good sketch of our graph here. something like that. Now if you're a little bit more advanced with this, what you can do is you can focus in on this first part of the equation, the y equals ax squared part, and that's going to give you the basic shape of the graph, like how stretched it is or how compressed it is, how narrow or how wide, like that. And so what some students like to do is they know the basic values for y equals x squared. So for example, if I put 1 in, 1 squared is 1, or if I put 2 in, 2 squared is 4, or if I put 3 in, 3 squared is 9. But what this 2 is doing is it's stretching it by a factor of 2, which means that these y values are going to be doubled. See, 2, 8, 18. So what you can do from the vertex, you can go right 1, up 2, or right 2, up 8. And that's a kind of a quicker way of graphing it. But a lot of times students just like to make a table and put the vertex here in the middle. So let's take a look at the second example. Okay, for example number two now, let's graph y equals negative x squared minus 6x minus 4. So how would you do that one? Well, I always like to start off by finding the axis of symmetry by using this formula, x equals negative b over 2a. So in this case, negative b is the opposite of b, so, or you can think of this as a negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 6 is going to give us a positive 6 over 2 times, now this negative is understood to be a negative 1, so 2 times negative 1. 
So six over negative two is coming out to negative three. So at negative three right here, this is gonna be our axis of symmetry. Meaning it's, the graph's gonna be the same on both sides. You can reflect it over that line. And to find the y coordinate of the vertex, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, negative three and we're gonna put it back in for x. So let's go ahead and do that. Remembering to follow the order of operations. So we have negative three squared is nine times negative one is negative nine. Negative six times negative three is positive 18. So this comes out to, let's see, nine minus four, which is equal to five. So our vertex is at negative three, five. So I put it in the middle of my table here. Now remember the vertex is always on that line of symmetry. That's why the negative b over two a also corresponds to the x coordinate of the vertex. So let's go ahead and plot this now. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Right about there, that's our vertex. Now what's interesting about this question as opposed to number one is, notice that our a value is negative. So when the a value is negative, that tells us that the parabola is gonna be opening down, which is gonna give us a maximum or a high point. When the a value is positive, it means the parabola is opening up like this, and it's actually gonna give us a minimum or a low point. So that's important to remember. So now let's go ahead and pick some points on either side here. So let's put negative four and negative two, negative five and negative one. So all I did is add one, subtract one, add two, subtract two. This way it's the same on both sides. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put negative two in. So let's see, negative two squared is four, times negative one is a negative four. Uh, negative six times negative two is positive 12. So we get negative eight plus 12 which is four. Okay, and then if we plug in, let's say negative one, uh, let's see, negative one squared is one, times negative one is negative one, negative six times negative one is six. So now we get negative five uh, plus six is one. So these are both the same at one. So let's go ahead and plot those now. We've got uh, negative four, four, which is gonna be right here reflect that over the line of symmetry, and negative five, one, reflect that over the line of symmetry. And we can also find our y-intercept. Remember our y-intercept is the c value right here, which you can see is gonna be negative four. So that means it's gonna cross right down here at negative four. And again, we can reflect that over the line of symmetry to get another point. Okay, so now we can see that our graph is opening down something like this and it has a maximum value. And sometimes they'll say, what is that maximum value? Meaning like, how high does it go? It's gonna go up to this point right here, which is the Y coordinate of the vertex. So it's gonna be a maximum of five. And then sometimes they'll also ask you, what's the domain in the range? Domain means like, what can the X values be? And you can see this graph keeps going to the left and the right as it goes down forever and ever. So you can say the domain is all real numbers write that fancy R there. And then the range is what can the Y values be. In this case, the highest that Y can be is five or lower. So we would say that the range is Y is less than or equal to five. If it was opening up, then it would be greater than. So great job on that one. Let's take a look at the third example. Before we do this last example, if you enjoy the way that I'm explaining things and you'd like to go deeper with uh, Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, check out my video courses for sale. I'll put a link in the description below. I take you through a typical Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra uh, course, step-by-step, -step, building on each previous concept. So check out those courses if you wanna go deeper with me. And if you just wanna support the channel, consider joining as a channel member. So for a few dollars a month, uh, you can support the videos that I'm putting up here on my Mario's Math Tutor and YouTube channel, and I really appreciate that. And if you want to also find another way to kind of help me out, you can purchase one of my fun uh, math t-shirts for sale. They should be in the description below or even um, able to click on them in the video below. So check out those uh, t-shirts. But let's dive into this last example. Number three, how would you graph this one? <clears throat> well, if I was gonna do it, I would start by finding the axis of symmetry using our negative b over 2a formula. So negative b means the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative four is four, divided by two times a, so that's two times one half. Two times a half is one, so four divided by one is equal to four. <clears throat> so that's the x coordinate of our vertex, and it's also the axis of symmetry. So right here at four, we can draw a dashed or dotted line <clears throat> like that. Now to find the y coordinate of the vertex, 
<clears throat> excuse me, we're going to put that 4 back in for x. So if we do that, let's see, we've got 1 half times 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 1. Remember the order of operation, so 4 squared is 16 times a half is 8. 4 times 4 is 16. So let's see, we get negative 8 plus 1, which is negative 7. So that's going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right about here is our vertex. Now notice the a value is positive, which tells us the graph is going to be opening up, okay, like this. It's going to give us a minimum value. We can pick some points on either side of the vertex. So for example, if I put maybe 3 or 5 or 2 or 6, we can get some additional points. Let's go ahead and put 3 in. 3 squared is 9. 9 times a half is 4.5. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. So this comes out to, let's see, uh, negative 7.5 plus 1, which is negative 6.5. And if we put, let's say, 2 in, 2 squared is 4, times a half is 2, minus 4 times 2 is 8. So we get negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5 for both of these. So let's go ahead and plot those. So 3, negative 6.5 is right about here, just a little bit above. And 2, uh, ne two negative 5 would put us right about, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, right about here. To reflect that over the line of symmetry. And we can find our y-intercept, that's going to be our c value right here, which comes out to 1. So that's going to be right about here, and we can reflect that over 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Okay, now we have a pretty good sketch of our graph. Now your teacher might ask you, what's the domain in the range? Uh, does this graph have a maximum or a minimum? What's the equation of the axis of symmetry? So axis of symmetry, x equals 4. This one has a minimum. What is the minimum value? It's going to be negative 7. That's how low it goes. That also helps us to find the range because the y values are going to be greater than or equal to negative 7. And of course, the domain is all real numbers because it goes to the left and the right forever and ever. So great job if you're able to follow those three examples. If you want some more practice learning how to graph parabolas, not just in standard form, but in standard form, vertex form, intercept form, etc., Follow me over to that previous video I did right there, and we'll get some more practice with parabolas. I'll see you over there.